I'm back with more uh, storytelling. So I have two channels, one's on BitChute, commercial free, and the other one is on YouTube. Both of them are under the search Cat Woodland. So a little update on how's it going in my neck of the woods, narc free, and it is this. I am actually on an online dating app just learning how to dialogue with men. And now I recognize that the inability to actually be heard and listened to, and to know when I wasn't being heard and listened to was rooted in my childhood. So a backgrounder is that I am the last child of four in a family that is run by a narcissistic mother who is pathologically so, and that she told us she loved us, but her showing it was always off. And I recognized this as I got older, but when you're young and you're subjected to narcissistic abuse, which is gaslighting, blame shifting, um, neglect, uh, name calling, condescension, misdirection, direct, directing you away from talents because the parent wants you to be whatever they want you to be so that they can talk to their friends about you in the context of how it makes them look. So I, uh, if you ever saw that movie, All That Jazz, it's really stylistically wonderful when they talk about the stages of grief. So I'm in acceptance now. Uh, the death of the fantasy that I had a happy childhood is what I am experiencing. And the death of um, my own fantastical thinking about myself in the context of a narcissistic family. So I knew I wasn't listened to, I knew I was yelled at, I knew I was poo-pooed, I knew I was blamed for things. And I also, ensuingly over the years, avoided family get-togethers in which I was subject to sleepovers. I would avoid them completely so that I was not sharing the roof that my parents were in. I did not do anything in within proximity of them, but invariably the mother would always create some sort of uh, insult injury to me. For example, a wedding we went to of a cousin, that was her younger brother, she's five years young, younger than her, her younger brother, his daughter uh, was to be married in New York State, upstate, almost to Canada, Amish country, and so we all went, but I stayed not in the hotel. It didn't matter that there were no vacancies, but that I chose not to stay at that hotel gave her the carte blanche to insult me in this way. I'm gonna take you all out, it's a, my treat. And we all go out to dinner and the bill comes and she goes to the waitress. We're gonna get the whole table, but not Kathy. And her, her partner at the time, the ex-narc, who I didn't know was a narc, but he showed his colors at that wedding when he kept trying to control my relationship with my cousin, Mark. And then on the way home, he walked out on me and of the hotel room and was going to hit the road. And so I had to figure out how to uh, get a ride home. And I called my siblings who had not yet left upstate New York. But long story short, let's just go back to the original mother, the narcissistic mother. So she's like, I'm gonna get everybody's but not Kathy's. And it hurt me. And my sister, the golden child, she mollifies me. Oh, oh, that's just the way mom is. Rather than coming to my aid, rather than saying, no, that's not fair. And my father didn't say, no, they're included. No, what does she do? She tells me to calm down. That's called a dysfunctional family. Now the dysfunction is long. And I, as the invisible child, have been going through the grieving process. 
as you look at the past, what has happened to, to me, you, and you know, when you look at your own life, when you discover what it is you really have been through, when you discover why you were narc bait in the first place, if you're a child of a narcissistic a mother, in my case, and a complicit father, you recognize that neither one of them were ever, ever emotionally available. Neither one of them ever gave me good guidance. Neither one of them directed me towards my talents and my abilities. The golden child got all that. I was misdirected. So that was just a small example that was going to a dinner and having the mother and the father not even say anything about it, not step in because he's a pussy with partner. He's complicit. He's been doing this for years. And I just sucked it up. And so the grieving that I have in my tissues, when I returned from Tucson, Arizona, in August of 2022, I haven't spent 600 plus on a ticket, money I could have used for my own health and well-being, I utilized to go to the family birthdays for my parents, my mother and my father. The golden child took us out for lobster dinner and she bought groceries and perhaps she spent as much money as I did overall, but it's not just for tat. It's that when you're spending almost $700 for a round trip ticket and somebody else makes the big show of taking everybody out for, for lobster dinner, like they're the heroine, and then buys the groceries and they still haven't met your almost $700 ticket, do they really do anything that fantastic? No. But of course I had to do what you always do, fawn. I'm all over the place, but what, what happens with a narcissistic family dynamic is when you grow up, your adrenaline, your adrenals are always being drained. You're always in a state of high alert and you, you go into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. They don't talk about that. Fawning is uh, giving compliments, trying to keep the narcissist off your back. All right, let's back up. My parents left New Hampshire. Um, I did not get encouraged to go for my scholarship. I was told to graduate early. Even though I was the fastest female runner, my sister had graduated. She would beat me by three tenths of a second, but she was still faster and therefore better. And therefore my skill set was never encouraged. Hers was, that's the difference between the golden child. But because it was the family pattern, and I get what I get, and beggars can't be choosers. These are all words my mother, the narc, said. I fell in line, okay? So fast forward years later, this is before I became a stripper. And yes, most strippers are dramatized women. Um, most of them are. Um, and I was one, but not aware of it because I had a good education. I had an Ivy League school uh, level, high school education, high honors, honors, athletic, voted three things, most athletic, most life-loving, and most creative because I could draw. I was an art artistic person. None of these were encouraged so that I could go someplace my mother wanted to visit me at, which was the call to Charleston, South Carolina. I left there, I went to the U of A, my sister went with me, the golden child, after uh, a year at West Point, actually two years at West Point, and she left in order to go to the U of A with me, but she was miserable, and, we, and I encouraged her to go back. She couldn't get in, and I said, contact coach, because she was a runner too. Of course, she's the golden child. She's the one that was three tenths of a second faster than me, which is a lot in uh, the runner world, okay? So I'm not encouraged, I'm discouraged. I don't capitalize on my skill set. I'm told that I can't uh, fill out uh, scholarships and applications for things like that because they make too much money and they wanna claim me on taxes. They claim me on taxes, my parents. They receive the money and didn't give me what they got in deduction, okay? 
So I couldn't get grants, even though I was paying for myself, I was paying my own room, board, tuition, uh, rent, and I couldn't make ends meet, so I had to keep leaving school. So my mother decides to come get me. They move from New Hampshire to Maryland. She has me move in with them, and, and her, they bought a big house that was split into three apartments. They lived on the bottom. They gave me a room with French doors, no boundaries, always barging in, always yelling at me. I gained about 15 pounds. I had a fat face, and I became bulimic, and uh, not for very long, but long enough. Uh, and um, it was like she only wanted to control me. So I had to develop a fantasy in my mind and I had to stop eating her food. I became macrobiotic. I started gaining control of my own life. Then she has to insult my food. She has to insult my friends. I got a job as a hotel clerk. I went to the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. I wanted to take art. I could teach art and I was in, uh, classes for that, but uh, I was kept guided. You can't get money at art. You can't make money. I, I, you could be an art teacher. You could be an art therapist for all the traumatized women. And this is before I became a stripper, okay? I had to go through this. So my sister and the older one, the, the toxic one that now exhibits um, her own pathological narcissistic tendencies. So she's not dead, but she's dead to me. I had to actually cut the ties. She's married and she has a little girl. My mother is in their face. She's making their uh, life miserable. She's making everybody's life miserable, but none of us are able to see what's really happening because it was all part of the family pattern. You took it, you just took it. My sister and I would go out for a beer every now and then and Jane bash. And then my brother-in-law and I became close and we would Jane bash as my mother's name. Jane bashing is when you laugh about the hideousness of the mother. And he loved that I would refuse to eat her food because as a macrobiotic, you become energy sensitive. And I recognized that she was putting negative energy into the food and I wouldn't eat it because of the bad vibes. Now, of course, they thought that was hilarious. And of course, she thought that was awful insult to her, but I couldn't eat her food because it was commercial. I ate pure food. I worked at a health food store too. So what happens? My brother-in-law falls in love with me. He tells my sister. And meanwhile, he asked me if I want to go on a motorcycle ride. I do. I don't know what's going on in the background. We come back. Everybody's worried about us. There was no GPS back then. We got lost. And he, we come back later than we thought we were going to be. And then my sister takes him upstairs so she can smell his dick. Then we have a family meeting in which it's decided Kathy has to get sent away. Now I'm devastated. I've lost a brother-in-law. I've lost my family. The dysfunctional family sends the invisible child me. I then become the scapegoat. I'm the problem. And my sister's, my toxic sister's husband ended up having a ser series of affairs and eventually leaving her um, practically penniless after her 30 plus years of marriage to him. So she got what was coming to her, I suppose. I wouldn't wish uh, narcissistic abuse on anybody, but she was not a very supportive wife. And she also blamed me for their marriage, not doing so well. We were all in Maryland together. Do you see how messed up this is? So I went from, from becoming the invisible to the scapegoat. I went to Block Island where there's the have and have nots. Get fucked over by the haves. I leave there, go to New Hampshire where my aunt is, my aunt Neil, who's my, my treasured aunt, my, my mother's older sister. And she got to tell me all about the truth of my mother, Jane, and her calamitous past and the truth of her and what she was really like. And I got a whole different understanding. I got the whole, con the light bulbs went on. I got to see all the lies that my mother told me growing up about how she was the carnival queen because she was so beautiful. She had the stupid carnival queen cup. It's in my books. I talk about it. 
And all of this is in my books. I'm looking for somebody to help me. I have the, I have 80,000 words and going. I need a publisher. I need somebody to have faith in me. Okay. I need, I need a publisher. I need somebody to help me publish this book. And it is on narcissistic abuse. It's also on shamanism. It's on utilizing the dance form. It's on how our minds are shaped, how not to fuck up your daughters, how not to sexualize them, how fathers need to actually be present for their daughters, that, that a pussy whip father is not a good role model. And so after going to uh, Arizona and seeing my parents and having all the dots connected, for having studied why I was married to a narcissist, well, number one, who was the mid-range narc, why I was married to another one, the lesser narc that was a, a covert, excuse me, an overt, and then had that 10-year tumultuous, awful, awful relationship with a user who accessed my bank account, who, who stole money from me, $20,000, who um, has... Finally, finally, I have become unaddicted. It was my trauma bond. I had to come to terms with why I was attracted. And he had to get old and decrepit and unable to have a heart erection in his 60s in order for me to recognize what a filthy son of a bitch he was, that he had sex with the neighbor. I knew this, but I didn't absorb it. He had, he had sex with the bartender and, oh, God, I have such a hard time whenever you go back to your studio to do your work. Because I would visit him. I invested time into him because I had the fantasy. You create trauma amnesia. Your brain fucks you over. They fuck you over and your brain fucks you over. When you were in a traumatic, traumatic, abusive narcissistic, abusive relationship with men because you become narc bait because of a parent, you are instinct injured. You are not healthy. I never saw what a healthy male-female relationship was. I saw yelling and screaming. I saw pussy whipping. And my father was complicit. He did nothing. I had to get over my anger with him. And when I came back from Tucson after seeing what I saw and my father requesting help because she's becoming increasingly forgetful, early onslaught, early onslaught, onset, but dementia asked you the same thing in the context of five minutes. Yes, when you eat whatever junk food that you can get your mouth around, mother, it's going to affect your mind. When you're ugly and mean and dismissive and negligent and abusive, it's going to affect your mind. So these people get uglier and uglier over time. Narcissists may live a long time, but unless they're ultras, they get uglier and uglier as time goes by and they get decrepit. So my father who she kept blaming on his memory loss on, on some sort of dementia. It's her because they blame shift. She kept saying, your father, he's losing his memory. It's her. So after the two uh, year shutdown, when they all got their little arm jabs and I refused to because I eat all natural, that's my health insurance policy. And I'm not afraid of death. And if something's going to kill me, I'm going, I am not going to um, face uh, death without bravery. It's faced with bravery and the understanding that life goes on. It transforms and it goes on. We are but a snap of the finger in this lifetime. But enough about the spiritual lesson. I know this for a fact. I, I've achieved nirvana. I have kundalini rushes. Let me just say that I had to do some soul searching about why did I pick this woman? Why did I land in that family? Was I being punished? What did I do to deserve this? And the answer is nothing. And if I were punished, if I were tricked, 
maybe if it was a choice, I could, I could look at it as, well, if I chose this hell as a lifestyle to be born into this fucked up family, then I'm going to get the most out of it that I can. And I'm going to learn what I have to learn in order to grow and know the truth of my being without interference because then I become a superpower. But it is not without blood, sweat, and tears. I lost blood, banged up because of that last relationship, falling, getting hurt, black and blue, uh, authentically falling because I would drink too much just so I could handle it. And then what happens? Lo and behold, I get, I get healed. I heal. I feel. I see. And then I go through the grief of what could have been, what should have been. But then I go through the acceptance of who would I have been otherwise? Would I be as compassionate? Would I be as wise? Would I have known gaslighting? of what the world governments did, of what our leaders did, what I know what moving the goalposts meant, what I, would I have recognized mental mind disturbances where they kept changing the rules because it affects the third chakra, the will? No, if I had had good parents, I may have actually gone along with the whole pantomime, with the whole scam the whole scheme and so I claim my pain as a badge and yet I do not intend on identifying with my wounds but I do have a lot to take care of in my life I have a lot to accomplish and my book is on its way I just need a financial incentive Otherwise, who else is going to give a fuck? How can I reach women and men who are growing up under the circumstance to how do you recognize it? What do you do with the grief? How do you create a support system that supports your soul's need to grow? How do you actually create that when you're brainwashed by parents? I was brainwashed with Christianity. Respect thy parents. Meanwhile, the parents didn't teach the rest of it, which is treat your children well and love is unconditional. My love I received was always conditional. It was always based on how well I behaved. And so I am seeking a book publisher. I'm putting it out there because I know that is through these videos, whether it's on BitChute or YouTube, and the difference being BitChute, they are mean in the comment section. They give you thumbs down and YouTube, but they currently don't allow that. And you can mute people, you can remove comments on both, you can mute a person, you can hide notifications, you know, you can pretty much control how that occurs except for the thumbs down but it doesn't matter. Every single time there's a thumbs down and bit shoot on my videos where I'm honestly talking about narcissism and narcissistic abuse, where I'm called a narcissist, where I'm insulted, I recognize that there are, that, no, that my mother used to say this, all men are created equal. Oh no, we are not. <laughs> We're only created equal because of fucking or something. And the way uh, biology is with the zygote and the egg and the sperm and all of that. That's the only way we're created equal. But I now know I am at a different level than most people. And without a superiority complex, I own it and I thank my creator. I thank God for my wherewithal. I thank God for my inner fortitude. I thank God for my strength. I thank God for the love I feel for myself and the compassion I feel for all those individuals who have had to deal with what I have had to deal with. 
which on the outside does not look bad. So what if you have a roof over your head? So what if your so-called basic needs are met? When your very essence of self is degraded, abused, and brushed aside your entire life, and then you marry people that mirror that, which is in essence a way from, for me to be able to see it and now be broke, practically penniless. Yeah. But I meet that fearlessly because if this earth is a school, it doesn't matter whether or not I have anything in a savings account. It doesn't matter. What matters is that my soul is exalted I got the lesson and I'm not lessened because of it. And I've got a thing or two that I can teach. So publishers, please contact me. Go to about me, email me. Thanks.